Have Shell Oyster House offers award-winning cuisine and service. Named TripAdvisor Best Top 10 Small Chains in the United States. Voted Best Seafood in Mississippi in Mississippi Magazine eight times. You can enjoy award-winning oysters and seafood, delicious steaks, pastas, sandwiches, salads, and so much more in a unique, polished, casual dining experience. Half Shell Oyster House is located at 115 Laurel Park Cove, Suite 105, Blow with Mississippi, 39232. Or you can give them a call at 769-257-7586. And hey, tell them Sonya sent you. She say, she say, she say, she say, sports. She say, she say, she say, she say, sports. She say, she say, she say, she say, sports. She say, she say, she say, she say, sports. Hey, y'all, it's your girl Sonia, and welcome back to She Say, She Say Sports. I have an amazing guest today. I'm, I'm truly excited. Um, please welcome producer, writer, director, actor, Morocco Omari. Hey, Morocco, how are hey. you today? I'm good. How are you? How are you doing? I am doing well. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Thanks for asking. You're welcome. So, um, we, um, I know you just got back in town from Rwanda. How was your trip? Did you enjoy your time over there? Yeah, I had a great time. Um, it's always, I've been going to Africa since 2006. Okay. Um, I had the great fortune of going to Rwanda in 20, well, Rwanda in 2017. I always put an A, we, we always put an A in it. In a, I know, me too. In a R and a W, and it's Rwanda. Um, so I first went there in 2017 and I fell in love with the country. Um, unfortunately, I went in April, which is the remembrance. So it was very quiet. Um, okay. It was the remembrance of the uh, remembrance of the genocide. And I was like, I need to come back here. You know, something, my spirit kept calling me back. And so I went back for a month um outside of april mm -hmm. and I, I just i love the country it's okay, been yeah. very um beautiful and, and wonderful and and relaxing and uh it calls my spirit all the time i bet it does I, and i yeah. bet it's very relaxing especially coming from america right now it's just so much going on so i, I can it's a lot, on. It's a lot on. <laughs> wow it's a lot so before we get into it, um, Brock, uh, um, Brock, I just, I kind of know you from way back. We met at Jackson State, and I think we met through, you're about to crack up when I said Chester and Lowdown Land. Is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> I took you way back, didn't I? Uh, 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 <laughs> you took me back. You yeah. took me back, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I, I yeah, had yeah. to say their names because anybody that went to Jackson State when we did, they know those guys. And, um, you know, we, my cousin Serena and I, my bestie, we would, you know, see y'all on campus or whatever. But um, you, you stayed at Jackson State, but then you went on into the military. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, I was having a little bit too much fun. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I had to get my head right and ended up in the Marine Corps. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for your service. So um, during your time at Jackson State, are there any experiences from your time at JSU that you found easy to tap into a role? Well, yeah, I, you know, I'm currently on the show P Valley and it takes place in the Delta, you know, um, Chuckalisa, Mississippi. Uh, oh, yeah. Make believe town. And, you know, being at J-State, I, um, one of my roommates, his name was, his nickname was Click. And his, his, his older brother was Big Click. And his <laughs> little brother was Little Click. Get out and, of here. No, no I, I, I can't make this up. And they were from Greenville, Mississippi. Which is the Delta. And, yeah, and he was just a good brother he said it like it was man look here man you know it was just 
Wow. And I, I mean, me and him, like my first day, that was the first dude I met. He was my my roommate. And we first we went to the liquor store. First thing we did was go to the liquor store, <laughs> grab some birth. And man, me and Click, me and Click was tight ever since. I haven't seen that brother in years, but uh Wow. A lot, of the a lot of the brothers, can't call them characters, a lot of the brothers I met kind of shaped um, Big L and uh, just his swagger and, and, and the way he moves. You wow. know, so that experience in, in, in Jackson, Mississippi really shaped my character. Uh, my family on my mother's side is from Jackson, Tennessee. So I spent summers down there okay. and Chris Christmas. So uncles also, uncles and cousins. And then on my father's side, they're from Boonville, Mississippi, which is on the northeast corner. So, yeah, man, you know, Jackson State was very instrumental in uh, a lot of a lot of the stuff that I do. A lot That's of the awesome. people. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're coming back to Big Miguel shortly. But I, you know, when did you know you wanted to be an actor? When did that part of your life begin? Well, you know, interesting enough, I was majoring in theater at Jackson State. Okay. And Dr. Tommy Stewart mm -hmm. is one of those people, like she called me into her office my sophomore year and was like, what are you gonna do with your life? You gonna party, throw parties, fight, chase women and drink for the rest of your life? And I was like, how does, she, how does Dr. Stewart know this? Who's telling Dr. Stewart my business? You know right. what I'm saying? <laughs> And I was like, you know, 18, 19 years old, you're like, yo, and Dr. Stewart was, she was this, you know, she had this power, this, this, this strong system, man. And I was like, I'm going to the Marine Corps. Cause she said, you have, you have potential, but you have no discipline. Mm. And, and you know, that word, no discipline. I said, okay, I'm going to the Marine Corps. That conversation was in November, and I was in Marine Corps boot camp by February. Are you serious? Wow. Yeah. No, so no. you knew the connection. You knew enough that it's like, well, maybe I need to go to the military to get the discipline that I need to. Well, you know, sometimes it takes someone out of your circle to see yeah. you, you know? I mean, your friends are going to encourage you, yeah, man, let's have a good time. You know what I mean? Right. Um, I was dating an older, I was a freshman, sophomore, my, my girlfriend was a senior, and, you know, and, and she was, she was very nourishing and maternal where I wanted to be a better man for her as well, you know, okay. being exposed to her and her family, you know, my, my college girlfriend, and then when Dr. Stewart saw me, like, she, would, she locked in, and I was like, okay. Let me get myself straight. Let me get myself right, you know. Um, but I was, like I said, I was majoring, majoring in acting. Went to the Marine Corps, um, and then I ended up in, in Desert Storm. So I'm fighting a war. I'm wow. in Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, and you know, you're just like. For me, it was like, okay, if I get out of here one piece, if I get back, I'm gonna follow wherever the universe and God guides me. You know, made it back to Chicago, enrolled back in school at Chicago State, and I had all these business classes, and I had one acting class. The big business classes, I was bored. I was bored to death. I'm like trying to stay awake. I'm like, oh, acting class. I was alive. I was looking forward to that class. Right. So I just jumped out of school again, took some classes around Chicago, and then I started doing Chicago theater. And that first time I stepped on the stage, it was like magic. It was like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. This mm -hmm. right here, this is, this is, you have that, you know, that Yahoo moment, that you come to Jesus moment, whatever yeah. you want to call it. And it was one of those things where I look back on my life and I was like, oh, I was always a class clown. I was always writing. I was always imitating characters and telling stories. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm supposed to do. So I just put all that Marine Corps training into theater training. And just my schedule, the way I schedule, you know, getting up to go to work, work out, 
go go to an acting class or go to theater or go do a play. So it was just like very regiment from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. I was work, work out, something to do with acting, you know, and, and that's how I did it. Which, uh, that's amazing how you, you look back <clears throat> and you thought about what you did. Mm -hmm. You know, you're from the west side of Chicago and here you are, you know, you're the class clown, you're cutting up and you were writing, but God was already lining it up. And it took yeah. Ms. Stu uh, Professor Stewart, and I love her, um, to show you what you needed. Right. And it took right. heat. That's right. amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, um, so Rock, I want, well, I, yeah, I'm gonna talk about that. So, you know, you, like you mentioned, um, you know, you were in, out of the country last month. You've spent a lot of time in the motherland um, for quite some time now. Was that um, because you were doing films or was it personal or both? And how did you, how did it end up happening for you like that? Um, it was personal, it was spiritual. It was, um, like I said, the first time I went was in 2006, that was, right after my um, divorce, I'd moved from LA, moved back to Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, a year prior, I, we, used to, we used to go to this actor's house every Tuesday night, actors, writers, directors, and all that. You know, just sit, it out, sit around, chop it up. Just, you know, just, it was a cool little um, think tank of creatives, you know? Mm -hmm. And one night, I'll never forget, it was just like, he had an exercise. And one of those questions were, if you die today, what would you regret? Wow. First thing came to my mind was not going to Africa. And that was in 2005. Mm -hmm. I kept that paper and went through the divorce and everything. And I was like, I had flight miles and I was like, let me just go. I went to Mombasa, Kenya for six weeks, just to, just for a spiritual journey, just to get by back yourself? into me. By yourself? I had, I had three other friends go okay. they came for two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then I was there another like four weeks by myself. Okay. And I had a blast. I had a great time. We went on safaris. You know, we just did a, did a lot around uh, Kenya and, and we went down to this, like the, slave caves of Tanzania, just a history lesson, the food, the people, the music, um, the energy, and it was, it just felt spiritual. And then every year I just started going back, wow. you know, um, to different countries. So I've been to like 18 countries, uh, and yeah, about 18 countries now. Um, but prior to that, you know, when I got home from Desert Storm, I'd made a, a promise to myself that I would take an international trip once a year. So I'd already been traveling, but I had never been to Africa until 2006. And um, once, I, once I went for the first time, I was hooked. It was just like, whoa, this is amazing. Like the lies they tell or the stuff that they don't show here in our media, mm -hmm. is, it's, it's, it's embarrassing almost, because it's just wow. like, you know, you know, every country has its problem, but the beauty of it, I've, I've never witnessed anything like it. That's amazing. And that's all I hear people that have gone there. They say how beautiful it is. And like you say, over here, they try to make it seem like it's so poor and, you know, of course. to make you afraid. And growing up, I was, I was like, I never want to go to Africa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. You know, but that is on my bucket list as well. Um, that's awesome. That's so, so Rock, did you ever start? Did, have you ever filmed anything over there? And if so, yeah, how it, different is it? How different is it from filming here versus in Africa? And that like, um, cost wise or whatever. Well, it's much cheaper, of course. <laughs> it's, it's, it's cheaper to shoot there. Um, I I've shot like three or four different projects we have a project now that's running on netflix africa and all black it's mm -hmm. called the girl in the yellow jumper it's a feature film that i i executive produced out of uganda it's the first ugandan film on netflix uh africa so i'm very proud we won the east african award 
uh, um, in Nigeria. It's like a, it's like the Academy Awards of, of, of Africa. We won East Best African East African movie. Um, in regards to you know the amazing thing about filmmakers, a lot of times you meet directors who know how to direct, they know how to write, they know how to pick up that camera, they know how to edit, they know how to do all the animation or special effects stuff. It's like you have a one man one man show a lot of times. So I've met some great filmmakers, some incredible writers because the stories uh, the stories you hear there are so dense. Like oh, I've never heard this story before. It's just like mm -hmm. so. Um, it was cheaper to shoot. The actors are good. They're hungry. Um, and it's a very, when I go there, I'm, I'm, I relearn what humanity really is. Because mm, it's like, I don't know, people, you know, it's just this tradition in different countries. Everything has, everybody has their own kind of tradition. So right. I relearn humanity or I'm learning something that's feeding me as, as a person, as an artist. And, you know, it's amazing. That's awesome. So would you ever consider moving there for good? And if so, what country? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I've, I'm debating, you know, uh, I have a job. <laughs> yeah. So um, ideally it would be great to be able to live there and come and work here work here mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying um bob marley said world citizenship man i'm you know you want to be a citizen of the world yeah. i don't want to be limited. you know I, we grew up in america thinking oh this is the greatest country in the world and for some it is mm -hmm. uh, for some it isn't some it's 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 very difficult or we have to work three times as hard to get half as much, you know, a lot of times in our profession. Um, but I, I, I bought land in Rwanda um, awesome. to build a home. And I bought, I just recently purchased uh, land to build a spa, Airbnb, and restaurant, you know. And it's okay. About, so, yeah, five to seven minute walk from there. You know, eventually I want to buy some safari vehicles and land in other countries you know um i'm going to senegal soon i've never been so there are some other places that i i, I really love uganda is uganda and rwanda is like 1a and 1b mm -hmm. you know you just can't get any work done in uganda uganda you're gonna be partying you just oh man <laughs> <laughs> no one parties like Kampala, Uganda. I'm serious. I've never seen anything like it. Wow. And I have friends there that are just, they won't let you rest. They're going to come. Where you at? They come get you. They, they, they fight to come get you at the airport. Oh my God. They fight to get you to the airport. It's, it's um, amazing. And uh, I've, I've made some beautiful friends. That's and awesome. uh, so, yeah, uh, Rwanda is my first stop. You know, awesome. a, a brother asked me, he said, uh, why'd you buy land here? And I said, well, I'm the first one to come back and I'm the first one to purchase land since we were stolen. So mm. we break that curse. We I break that curse because, you know, your, your, your ancestor who was stolen and brought here, all they wanted to do was go back. So you know? they wanted to do you know and you know they just want to get back and just and now we're at a point where some of us don't even want to go you know what i'm saying some of us are won't ever go because of the way it's depicted right um so and and that in itself is what was so that's what they wanted Mm -hmm. You know, the people who enslaved us. At one time, right. you will get your whole, you, you will just be straight up, you know, <laughs> it's almost like uh, deleting your history and deleting your identity and your DNA that you will never, ever want to go back to where you originated or the, yeah. the origination of man. And, and that's, that's, that right there is powerful. You know, okay. when someone... 
when 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 they just you know we would rather go celebrate or spend our money in Europe. Mm -hmm. You know anything about that? You'd rather go celebrate and spend your money yep. of the people who, who colonized or enslaved you than to go home. Than to go home and see it. It's a it's a it's a mindset. And like you said, how they, you know, taken so much out of history books, they actually taking more stuff out of the history books now. They've even said that slavery wasn't slavery. It was kind of like we wanted to do it. We, we volunteered, so to speak, and that's bananas. Um, so you, you're you're right. Who we rather go to? And it's nothing wrong with those places because I do want to. I would like to visit all of the places. You know, yeah. um, Italy, France, but no. You know, most people don't want to go home, and you, it's home, <laughs> and so. I, I've heard, I, I've seen where some brothers and sisters, they moved to other countries. One guy said he pays like $2,600 a month for all his bills. He has a maid and, you know, it's, he's at peace. And I'm seeing that a lot. And I think mm -hmm. our generation, like our family, our parents couldn't do it, but our generation have a little bit more money and we travel more and get to see other places outside of America and it's just like wow you know I, I don't want to be here anymore so you're absolutely yeah. right yeah. so Rock you've played some very riveting um roles but I want to talk about three of my favorites um uh -oh. <laughs> the, the first one is when you portrayed um well one of, well I'll tell you this the first time I, I think I ever really saw you on TV was when you played um, Tony's love interest on Girlfriends. And we, oh. we screamed. We was like, oh my God. So, you know, we was like, he made it. <laughs> so we was really excited for you. <laughs> but that's not what I want to talk about. Um, you, yeah. you portrayed Kevin Hunter, Wendy Williams' husband, in the Wendy Williams mm -hmm. biopic a few years ago. First of all, I love Wendy. And I really wanted this to be a great movie. I didn't want it to be a, a flop like some of the Lifetime movies they've, you know, done uh, like Whitney or um, Aaliyah. It was just like, I cannot take it. However, Wendy was here and she was able to be a part of it, thank God. But mm -hmm. you and Sierra Payton did an amazing job uh, portraying Kevin Hunter and Wendy Williams. How did you prepare for um, that role? Mm -hmm. Oh man, that was um, as an actor, you're like, who? When you play someone who's alive, you're just like, hey, okay, because um, they're gonna compare you to that person. Mm -hmm. um, I I was painting my stairs. Let me say that I was, and it was we're in the middle of lockdown, painting my mm -hmm. stairs. My phone rings, my manager. And anytime more than one manager is on the phone, it's it's business. And I'm Something like, yeah. what's going on, you know? And they were like, no, no, you know, they, because we were in also waiting on on Stars and Lionsgate to come back to counter an offer for P-Valley. We were in the middle of negotiation. It was like, no, it's not about P-Valley. I was like, well, what is this about? It was like the Wendy Williams movie. I was like, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> you know? And they were like, well, um, apparently one of, one of the, um, producers on, um, this movie, Wendy Williams is a big fan of P Valley and loves your character. And I was like, okay, they were talking, they said Kevin Hunter. Now I knew who Wendy was, you know, you know, Wendy, mm -hmm. I live on the coast, not to know who Wendy Williams. I didn't know much about her husband. Um, read the script, the money was good. I said, I agreed to do it. They flew me to Vancouver. I got this call on Monday. I was in Vancouver. They wanted me in Vancouver by Wednesday. I was like, oh. wait a minute. We got to, you know, we hadn't finished the negotiation. So I was Monday, got the call. I was in Vancouver by Thursday. Wow. And preparing for this role. So I, luckily we had two weeks. We had to quarantine in our apartment, couldn't leave. So I had two weeks to find whatever I could. Couldn't call a brother on the phone, you know, because, and even I, if I could, 
you probably didn't want, you know, the movie to happen anyway. So I found one phone call on YouTube where I can hear his voice. And I, I had a lot of pictures that I could pull, you know, and you hear the stories and then you hear people inter saying things about the brother, you know, what happened or how he was. So I just took that and then what I had, the text in the script and used that as, you know, my my guideposts and just wrote down certain things that I wanted to carve out uh, as, as a character, you know, so I had to go to work and thank you for Chicago theater for the way we break down scripts and break down characters. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to show how much this brother loved her, you know, because mm -hmm. we start with love, you okay. know, and we show how much he loved her. And then the relationship starts fraying, you know? Um, so even if we play, or even if I play what we consider a bad guy or unsavory character, I wanna make him as human as possible. The more we make him human, the scarier he is. You know what I'm saying? That's um, good. Case in point, Anthony Hopkins in Silence of the Lambs, he's just very human, he's a ha human cannibalist he's sitting there talking about you know you know just very conversational you're just like oh this dude is scary you know yeah. um so i had that and then i had a great director and 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 working with sierra payton was amazing you know we would get on you know we were on different floors so we just zoom each other and just read through the script and talk about the characters you know and so it was great bouncing off when you have someone to dance with you know, the music is sweeter, you know? Yeah. So it was a great time. I had a good time, you know? And you I'm know, glad that it was as successful as it was. It, it really was. And so you didn't even get a chance to talk to Wendy about it at all? She didn't no. give you instructions? No, this not at all. all you. This was, yeah, I think, I think Sierra got to speak to Wendy. I didn't, I was, I was shut down, I, you know, like, <laughs> I don't think Wendy, Wendy probably didn't care how he was portrayed, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, like, at that point. But at that, that says point, a lot about, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I was, I was just, that was, yeah, just at that point, she really, she probably didn't care how he was portrayed, you know? Um, and I just said, okay, this, I have to trust the work, you know? Mm -hmm. That, that New York, you know, New York, Chicago is different from New York. Absolutely. You know, Chicago, we, we, we're laid back. Yo, what's happening, man? What's, what's good? Yeah, New York is <laughs> you know, they got that. You know, they got the, a different kind of rhythm. So I had to add that New Yorkism on the brother, you know, and. Uh, How did you do that? Who, who did, I mean, because like you say, the accents are totally different. We're, not we, sorry, Chicago. Chicago is very um, laid back. So how, did you use any body like a rapper or an actor from New York to kind of yeah I did. Who did you, do? <laughs> <laughs> you know because I couldn't find any video of him but like as I was searching on YouTube uh Dame Dash came up. Wow and and fat Joe came I love up. it. I love it. <laughs> and it was just a no nonsense I am the alpha male. Yeah. So I kind of combined those two brothers um, and, and, and just, you know, added them. They were like my muse a lot of times. And I was just like, let me, let me look at these brothers. Yeah. And, and the way they just, the way they answered questions, the way they was just like, you know, New Yorkers are emphatic. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, I ain't doing that, son. You know, it's just yeah. very, very, very aggressive. Right. You know, and I live on the, I live, I live on the East Coast, so I'm, I'm, I, I spend a lot of time in the city. I'm in Jersey, so I'm in New York and and Brooklyn and Harlem. I got a lot of brothers up. What's up, Harlem? What's up, me, Brooklyn? Um, got some good brothers up there that, you know. They had that same kind of vibe, you know. Yeah. And I'm always as actors, we sit back and we watch, 
We watch the way people walk. We watch the way they talk. We watch the way what kind of jewelry and where they wear their shades and all that stuff. So it's it's those are the specificities that break down the character when you just like, okay, I need I need these glasses. I need that pinky ring. I need this. You know what I'm saying? So I was making a list of the stuff that, you know, I watch, I look at pictures of him. And I'm like, oh, he wore a scully like that. He wore, yeah, he wears glasses. He had on his, you know, his vest and his t-shirt, you know, his Tim's. So it was just very specific on what I needed, you know, in my actor's closet um, to help bring the, make that, make the character pop. You know? That's interesting. So you're you're pretty much preparing for a role pretty like all the time. Like you said, you're observing people and looking. So you're you're preparing all the time. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. After yeah. portraying Kevin and you know, knowing the history of this relationship, how um like now that you you played that character, what does it mean like when you see Wendy and the stuff that she's going through still? Even like last week, he took her to court. Um, you probably don't know this, but he took her to court to get them get the judge to get her to pay his bills. How? What? What does that? I mean, and not trying to bash him, but how? Now after playing him, what does that mean to you? Knowing more about their situation. I mean, I'm I'm just an actor, you know. I mean, a lot of That's times people on the street. It takes it takes it personal um right. in any relationship it's uh public life private life it gets ugly love you know what i'm saying yeah i'm not as far as the inner workings of any relationship you know i can have my um you know my idea or what i think about a, per a lot of times i go into a character i'm trying to keep a clean slate Mm -hmm. because I don't want to judge or prejudge the person because gotcha. you know any relationship starts off beautiful and you get to know each other and you fall in love and whatever and then whatever reason it, it you fall out of love right. whatever for wow. whatever reason what someone did so you know when we look at these two characters we say okay well are these two people I'm sorry these two mm -hmm. people in real life you know we only know what pe what what people show us. We don't know the behind the scenes workings. That's true. I really like. I I don't want I don't want to uh, pick a side or anything about because I don't I don't know them personally. I don't know, um, <clears throat> but karma. I feel like karma. The universe. It always bites you back. So you know what I mean. I don't need it. I don't need to kick a person while down. It it'll happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If it's if if it's to be, it'll be. You know, because um, you talk to a sister I dated, they were like, "Oh, Morocco." Then you know, you know what I mean. Depending <laughs> on right, you know what I'm saying. Like depending on who's that, who's ever telling the story, they're gonna make themselves right. look good or the victim or whatever, you know what I mean? People don't ever like, well, you know, I did mess up, yeah, I did. You know, in any relationship, sure, I messed up. I did some wrong you know things. Yeah. yeah, exactly, if we're being real, um, but you know, I, I can't we fix this because I know people are gonna be like, this man, his whole, see, my my pic my painting is straight. I just wanna let y'all know. <laughs> I see, it's straight, yeah. <laughs> it's way the that, angle what is that? <laughs> Uh, I, th I got this painting in Ghana. It's like some warriors dancing and stuff. That's dope. Uh, I got the painting and, and I was in Accra. I got it, you know. I love I always it. like art and drums and different things. Um, but yeah, I saw that the judge didn't award him alimony or something like that. Like, okay, it's, it's a blurb for me. It's not really like, because, you know, people's business are their business, you know. That's true. Um, and you're right. Say, hey, man, you know. Well, you know, and that's funny you say that, but Wendy made it her business to tell everybody's business. So, in a sense, the reaping what you sow, it came back to her as well. And I hate it because, again, I'm a fan. I really, really, and my friend was like, How could you be a fan of hers? I'm like, Because she's funny. She's funny. Um, she made the tea hot 
and it was she it was like from her own lane. Yeah, she made it. You know what I'm saying? Any any person who rises to that level, carving they carve their own lane. You know, you may not agree with what she did or what she does or how it all went down, but she carved the lane. You know, she she is a part of American culture. You know, and she did it, and she, and it's birthed a whole lot of different shock jocks. Now we have all these other people. Um, so you know, you it, she, she she's a brilliant woman. Brilliant. We don't have to agree with. We're not going to agree with everything that people do. You know, absolutely. But hey, yeah. man, you know you when you're coming from different cities. She's from Jersey. You come from different cities. You just like there is a whole lot of stuff you have to go through to get to become successful. Mm -hmm. You know, this way I'm like, hey, you're successful. Thank you. No, it's a, it's a lot that you have to fight. There are a lot of minefields and dealing with uh, a lot of gatekeepers, mm -hmm. you know, that can one note can set you back five years. You're just like, man, mm -hmm. you know, and one job can just boom, open up doors, you know? Yeah. So I commend her for, for creating her lane. I don't have to agree with, you know, the way she called out different rappers or, you know, the culture or anything like that. Yeah. But you, I give her her respect, man, you know? I do too, I do too. I wish her well, I really do. Likewise. So my second favorite role, um, is when you played Tyree Cousins on my one of my shows, Empire, and you were a detective. You were um, actually Lucius Lyons, which was played portrayed by Terrence Howard. You was Lucius Lyons' half brother. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> how was this? How was first of all adding you as his half brother to his twisted dark past was made it even better. So, how was this? role for you um playing a detective and I, you played a detective in another sh i think it, what was it um i played a detective on a few yeah, shows a lot of shows yeah i forget it yeah, you have so <laughs> yeah quite a bit of them so well it wasn't hard for you to betray um, to to uh, prepare for this role am i correct since you already have played a detective well yeah yeah and yes and no okay when I got the role, you know, it was just a brother who grew up in Philly with um, Lucius and Cookie, right? We shot two episodes, and then the third, the, 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 the finale of the second season, um, a friend of mine on the show, Tasha Smith, she was like, I think they're gonna make you, I think they're gonna make you half brothers. I said, what? Yeah, because, you know, they think you and Terrence Howard. I was like, well, you don't look alike. I said, what? <laughs> I said, how's that going to happen? I get the script, and it's revealed that I'm his half-brother. This is my third episode, the finale. This is like, boom, in the show. Like, you know what I mean? It was the finale of season two. And I'm like, now I have to go do my homework. Why would I be coming out to my half-brother? So I had to create this whole backstory of why I would come after my half brother because they didn't give it to me. So I was like, oh. Another, like the Kevin Hunter situation. You had to I had to go to work. <laughs> Thank you, Chicago Theater. Thank you. Right. Chuck Smith and all these brothers that directed me and stuff. Um, so I had to write down a whole backstory of what happened up until now and why. And I was just like, okay, he cheated on his mother with my mother, got, got you know, pregnant. And then when our father died, they got all the money. And, you know, my mother was, and then I went to the Marine Corps and she, his, his crew was selling her drugs and she got, a, you know, strung out on drugs, you know, and then I, I graduate and I come back and she's passed away. So I wanted vengeance, you know what I'm saying? So vengeance was mine, you know, and I'm not saying I was, it wasn't that Lucius gave her the drugs, but his crew knew that that was my mother. Right. So I didn't create this whole backstory of why I'm coming out to this brother like I did 
you know, so, um, and it was great. I, I enjoyed going to work, to work with uh, Terrence Howard and Taraji Henson, Tasha Smith and Andre Royo and, you know, all the, you know, all the brothers, man, we had a great time with that, man, because it was just like, I was like, how am I going to come at him today? You know what I mean? Right. And I, was, I hear like if if Taraji, it's almost like music. If Taraji plays the trumpet, I'm going to come under with the bass. You know, it's just like, you have to figure this out, you know? So it really, you it was, um, gave me a chance to test, really test my craft mm. with all the episodes that I was able to do working with, um people that I admired in this game. And uh, I was like, all right, let me see if I can hold my own. You always think, yeah, I'm I'm, 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 I'm dope. I'm, uh, I'm, yeah. You gotta have that kind of confidence uh being an actor. You can't be like, well, I think I'm good. No, you're just gonna be like, I'm right. you know what I mean? Because you, you, right. you, you, you <laughs> I had a conversation with Denzel and Denzel's like, yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> just like, oh, okay, you are. You are who you are. All right. Yeah. And you, so you got to have that kind of confidence in your craft. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Sure, you could be cautious and afraid. And, and you know, sometimes roles will scare you. You're like, oh, man, I don't know if I should do this. This is a rough role here. But then you're just like, all right, let me go to work. Let me put the work together. And so, it felt it felt good working, you know, with Cass. I I asked the producer right before we were. I think it was right before we revealed I was his brother. Mm -hmm. I said, "Let me call him." Uh, what was his name? It wasn't Lucius. It was uh, Ah Man. I forgot what his name was, and I called him oh, by his. Oh, room. Damien! Uh, oh crap! Wit, Dewitt. Dewitt, yeah. I was like, "Can I call him?" She was like. Ooh, she 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 I asked her she was because she was directing uh um <laughs> this one of our executive producers was, was directing and she was like I was like yeah that's what I want him to do and I did it and I said something to wait he was like I mean he was like what yeah he was like, you know my name, name. Was a very natural respond <laughs> and, Terrence, and Terrence is so great that he was like he said his line and, he's, and then he added he's like my name Yo. Oh so, my gosh. Yeah. I enjoy you. But let me ask you this. So, because it, it 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 disturbed me. I know it's art, but how did it feel when Lucius is, I can't remember the mom um, that played when she chopped your head off? I didn't like that. She didn't chop my head. She stabbed me in the neck. <laughs> no, when she stabbed, I thought your head was off. No, I, I, I probably got cut off after I was dead, but yeah, she, oh, yeah, she, yeah. she stabbed me in my neck. You know what, man? That that was that was wrong, man. That was a wrong deal. <laughs> like they didn't tell me it was coming. I get the script and I'm like, oh, oh I guess. No, until you got the script. Oh my god. Oh man, like yo, I'm coming in there whistling. Come to get <laughs> hey, drink, like, drinking coffee. Get my check, and I was like, oh, let me get the script. And every, you know the. <laughs> I think everybody in the office, they knew except for me. I'm like, hey, how's it? Yeah, hey, everybody's like, look, hey. Yeah, hey. What's going wrong? <laughs> right. Yeah, so it was, he's coming. You know? And I, remember, I was like, yo. <laughs> was that your first kill um, kill in a show? No. Man, I can, you know, I got, I've been killed on so many shows. It's crazy. But that one was just like, man, because we could have got a great run out of these characters. Yes. It was, yeah, we, it was, yeah, y'all had, had become friends. I was like, okay, they're going to make it. Handle it, yeah. And uh, boom. But, that you know, that's TV. Else. That's TV, yeah, that's TV, you know. Yeah. And, you know. And now I'm on the show that I'm on, and I'm having a great time. It's my favorite character. It's my favorite character that I've I've done in TV and film. You really? know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, I get the big L. I get to play Big L, man. Big L is fun. He's funny. 
got his got his gangster side. He's he's just a good time dude, man. You know, and uh, I'm enjoying playing this role. And and Katori Hall, I can't speak enough about the way this sister writes. You know, the the scripts are dense. You just like a lot of times with TV, you're like, well. You got to make something work. Like, wait a minute, how this, you know, I had a moment in Empire where I'm, I fell in love with Boo Boo Kitty and I'm like, wait, when did this happen? Like, you know, because my character was so clean. He was just like, yeah. no, you know, you couldn't find any bad history on this brother. And I'm like, well, what, right. when did he? So I had to make, we had to make that kind of work. Mm -hmm. um, this sister Katori, or she... She makes she makes you want to tear up all your scripts. Mm. That's, that's how good she is. And she's very specific. She knows, you know, the way she writes the relationships. I mean, this last season, I think we we probably tackled almost every relationship you can have. Polyamorous, uh, you know, men man on woman in a race it's just we just had so much stuff going on and i'm like how do you come up with this you know so it's it's a joy and a pleasure to to work on this show um because that pink posse that fan base ain't never seen nothing like it so Rob, I'm, that's so not to cut you off but this was my third favorite and so the listeners are know he's talking about big l from P Valley, the Showtime, um, it's a it's a hit. It's a cult classic right now. And yeah. just like you said with, with the writing. So when it first came on, I saw the previews. I was like, not interested. Don't, you know, I knew it was in Miss, you know, supposed to be fake Mississippi. I'm like, not interested in seeing some strippers. I'm good. So yeah. one of my guy friends, he was like, Have you seen P Valley? Nope, don't want to. And he was like, you really need to check it out. I was like, why? So I could see some girls um, going up and down the pole. I was like, I mean, like, seriously, is there a storyline? He was like, no, really, it is a storyline. I was like, whatever. So I checked out the first episode. And I was like, uh, I wasn't impressed. The following mm -hmm. week, I didn't have anything to do on a Saturday. And I watched the second episode. And when I said I binged all of it, like, I was like, oh, my gosh, this is really good. So I'm falling in love with the characters. Then I was like, ah, there's, there's Rock. So I'm seeing you on there because I didn't know you were on there. And, yeah. you, and, and you play a custodian. You work with Uncle Clifford, which is mm -hmm. uh, portrayed by Nico Anon. Anon am I saying his last name? Nico right? Anon, yeah. Yeah, Nico Anon. And, and what amazed me, the second season, like you said, floored me. the Because yeah. uh, she told more stories about the characters this time. The Miss Mississippi story mm -hmm. and the way Uncle Clifford or Nico narrated, I cried because mm -hmm. there's so many women going through this. And mm -hmm. I had a family member, a very close family member that was abused by her husband for years. And mm -hmm. just to see it and it it amazed me. And then the storyline with Little Murder, Little Murder and Tweak and that brother, I I, don't, I forgot Tweak name. I follow him on IG, but he mm -hmm. was amazing. Mm -hmm. And that last scene, it 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 was just it floored me the whole season. How you guys just and then now you in the peel game <laughs> with um <laughs> I forgot mm -hmm. the white guy's name. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Uncle Clifford was not happy with you. <laughs> it was just. You know, everything was just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Then Mercedes, you know, it, it's just, it was amazing. Just, mm -hmm. did you ever think that you would be on a show like that? No, no, absolutely not. Um, it, the, you know what, it's, it's, it's that it's, the universe happens, man. Yeah. I was familiar with Katori because she was a playwright here in, in New York. And um, she had a show on Broadway that I went to go see, um, Mountaintop. 
which had, it was on Broadway. It was Sam Jackson and Angela Bassett. It was a two person play. And I was like, whoa, you know, it was, it was about Sam, um, Martin Luther King's last night in the, in the Lorraine Motel. And Angela Bassett played this maid slash angel who visited him his last night before, you know, he was, he was murdered, assassinated. And I was like, oh, this woman, who was this one? And then I saw her on 60 Minutes and I, I'm watching her on 60 Minutes. And I mean, she's just landed in. And I was like, hmm, she's from Memphis. And I was like, I got people, I got a family in Memphis. I was like, I want to work with this woman. I want to work with this woman one day. Then we started seeing each other around New York. She'd see me in plays. Um, I, I see her work, you know, we got to know each other. And I was, then I was uh, workshopping some of her new stuff, you know, and she saw me in a play at Lincoln Center in New York. And um, she came up to me. She's like, Rock, I got a role for you. I was like, all right, yeah, okay, cool, 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 whatever. You know, because you hear that all the time. People like, you know, right. uh, but Couture is different. And I was in Uganda. She's married to a Ugandan brother, and he's a, a friend of mine. And I went to Uganda, and uh, I was over there, and Katori called me. She's like, where are you? I was like, I'm in Uganda. She's like, okay, we, we shoot in Pea Valley um, in Atlanta in February. I was like, all right, I'll be back. You know, offered me the role. I hadn't read the script, but it's Katori, and, and I know her work. Um, and uh, I, I, we got on that battlefield together. And here we are. Now, the trivia of P Valley, um, we had shot everything that first season. And then they shelved it because whoever, I don't know if it was Lionsgate or Star or something, it, did, it changed whoever was in charge. So whoever was in charge left. They loved the show. Whoever came in allegedly didn't like the show. You know, they were like, okay. yeah, this, will never, this will never see the light of day, right? Uh, they call Katori, let her know, and come get her stuff, and you know that this will never air. They called her. This was in February of uh, what was it twenty twenty, mm-hmm. March of twenty twenty, lockdown. So nothing shooting. There's no content. So they they had this already shot you know, show, and they were like, well, let's just we gotta put it up. <laughs> we'll just put this on since we have it, you know, and boom, that's how it happened. So if it wasn't for COVID, you would have never heard of a P Valley. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So it yeah. was to happen. Um, you know, you mentioned, you know, we talked about the different things um, that, t- that um, she touched on, like a plethora of taboo situations within the African-American community. Do you think Mm -hmm. that the show has spurred important dialogue amongst our community now? I hope so. You know, I I really do hope so. Um, Because I think she, she humanizes people. You know, then some people say, well, she's pushing an agenda. Um, I try to stay away from those debates um, and just, you know, me and Uncle Clifford's relationship, our friendship um, is just like, we're human, we're brothers. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, we don't get into like, oh my, look at you, you look weird. Uh, you, oh, look at you, I wouldn't, you know. These are two brothers and like I, I did my backstory of why, <laughs> you know, and I'm sure he did his backstory of why. Mm-hmm. Um, the crazy thing is that, well, not crazy, the interesting thing is that Nico and I in real life, we're born on the same day, May 7th. Are you right? serious? Taurus. Yeah, two Tauruses. And Katori is also a Taurus. Mm-hmm. I think she's May 11th or 12th. But Nico and I, in real life, almost the same person. So the way we see things, the way we interact, the way we, you know, just as as men, you know, he's from Detroit, I'm from Chicago, and he's, you know, he doesn't, you know, wear 
all the extravagant stuff that uh, Uncle, uh, Uncle Clifford would, would but, right. you know, good brother, man. We, we, good brother, you know what I mean? And I'm, because of this show, I've, I have this friendship, you know, with this brother, you know, and I can say when I was in my teens and in my early twenties, I wasn't mature enough to have the conversations or to even be associated um, with the community, you know, and my growth and my maturity that I'm a man, I don't have to worry about, you know what I'm saying? We're built the way we're built and that's okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, And anyone who treats me like a human being and with respect, I'm obligated to do the same, you know? Now, if I'm disrespected, then I have to let that person know, (laughs) you know, and deal with accordingly. You know what I mean? But no, man, I, I dig up the show and hopefully there are conversations being made. Hopefully it's enlightening people. It humanizes people. And despite our differences, we can sit down. We can be friends. We can break bread. We can celebrate each other. You know what I'm saying? And what one person does in their bedroom does not affect me and what I do in my bedroom. You know what I'm saying? Nothing to do with that. We're human. We're all, you know, we all bleed. We all cry. We all have success and we all have failures and we all have a dream, hopefully. Um, So hopefully it has opened up some conversations and hopefully it has, uh, you know, matured a few people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. One thing I can say, and I, I totally agree with you what you're saying, um, and that's why I've always said in any situation, I may not and agree with what you do, but I love you. And mm. you're supposed to just love people. Mm. You're not supposed to judge their lives. That's mm. not what you were put on this earth to do. We're supposed yeah. to love. I mean, we're so, you know, especially Christians, mm. they're easy And I'm a Christian, so I can talk about us. We're easy as a whole to damn and don't do that. That's not, if you're a Christian, you never saw Jesus damn anybody. He never did that. Now he flipped some tables when he got mad, you know, when he was, you know, doing stuff, but he never did that. And so if we're supposed to be like him, then be like him, just love him and be done with it. Um, Little Murders character and I know I told you we, we, we're about to wrap up I gotta say this you, you know especially in the hip-hop community you know his character plays a homosexual rapper but he's not flamboyant you know he's just he he wanted he know like like a rapper like we've always seen you know just a rugged dude and that's how you know they've always pretty much portrayed um what's so good about Pretoria's writing is because First of all, a lot of women, including myself, fell in love with Lil Murder. <laughs> but right. Lil Murder didn't, you know, the character didn't want us, but we, but even at the end of second season, when, I, and we'll find out third season, I, I'm thinking he was dreaming, I, um, Uncle Clifford, I don't know, because, you know, he was on those pills that you had. <laughs> and so, um, I don't know if he was dreaming or what, but at the beginning of that episode, when Lil Murder was looking at all of his faces in the mirror, that was so freaking deep to me because it's like, it was so many parts of him, but he wanted the real part of him to come out. But when he got on that stage, he, you know, he forgot about it and did the song and seven pounds of pressure. Man, let me tell you something. That's one of my favorite <laughs> songs. I know he is, you know, he said, you know, he preferred being a percussionist but and an actor, but he really should put out a couple albums. He is dope. He really, he got the flow. Yeah. But um, it, it's just an amazing writing. Um, I'm excited for season three and mm-hmm. just see what 
what comes next? Uh, have y'all started um, filming? <laughs> no, okay. I think we, uh, we'll probably get we'll get started this summer. Okay. Uh, we shoot uh, down in Atlanta. So, uh, yeah, I think we will get started. The last thing I heard was we'll get started probably around June, July. Okay. So then we'll go down a month prior to start prepping costumes, mm -hmm. dialect coaches, uh, the ladies, they have to start their, um, you know, choreography and, yeah. you know, I mean, bless their hearts because man they be on those the choreography the the poles the dancers the backup dancers the the stunt dancers wow that is that is work That's and work. i mean we have a lot of uh, athletes you know because mm -hmm. what they do i'm just like whoa <laughs> like, it's a lot it's a lot you gotta, you they are amazing be, I'm just they walking through moving. smooth with a cane, you know what I'm saying? They be up there, they work it, right. man. They, you know, and you know, it's, it's not one take. You don't just shoot one take. Yeah. You're shooting, you probably shoot 10 takes of one angle, and then you have to turn around, you have to go, you got to get these different takes. So it's work, man. They, they are putting in that work, man. So hats off to the whole gang, the whole crew, man. Uh, I'm I'm very proud of the project, man. It's the thing about it is it's controversial. Mm -hmm, very. And I, you said something. You said you didn't. You know, you, you saw the preview. I don't want to see that show because on the outside looking in, you just think, "Oh, this is about strippers. This is some misogynistic BS." I don't want to see this old. And then when you you open that book. You peel back those layers, you're like, yeah, oh, that writing it took me in. <laughs> that is the brilliance of Katori Hall. She mm -hmm. takes these people and humanizes them. Yeah. You think I don't want I don't want to know nothing about their lives, but they're real people. Yeah. And I think she went to something like 50 different strip clubs and just interviewed you know, dancers. And that is a testament of her hard work yeah. and her attention to detail, you know, um, and to bring it to us, because it's like when you get a good, always in music, I guess I should have been a musician, but you get a script, it's like a good song. You're like, oh, oh, this is what we got to say. Oh, this is easy to sing. We sing this a hit right here. You know what I'm saying? It's right. You know, it's amazing. You 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 have brought up music three times since we've been on this interview. I yeah. I, I was a voice major and um, played violin at Jackson State. I, I I was a voice major, but it's amazing. I was yeah. like, he's brought up dance. He's brought up trumpet. You you know that's I like that the analogy because it all it is kind of like music. It flows. Yeah, You're it's right. a it's a musicality to it. It has to have yeah. a it's a musicality to it, and and it's almost like we are this big band is symphony and you have to have to find your your song and, and when it's time for you to riff and you know you get your you know everybody get their little showcase so yeah man um yeah so hopefully season three we hit y'all in the mouth with something and uh i'm excited i'm looking forward, I'm looking forward to it <laughs> i have one more question but i'm not gonna ask what you got okay What's more gratifying, portraying a role that garners attention or writing, directing a part that highlights that actor? Wait a minute, give me that again. Give me that again. Okay. That's a, that's, yeah, that's what's a, more gratifying, portraying a role that garners attention or writing or directing a part that highlights that actor? Oh, for me, it's writing and directing you know because okay. I mean? it's almost like you birth a baby yeah. you know you see something i the first thing i wrote was a, a short film called the male groupie and we shot it in la and i wrote it freehand i was on a set of judgment 
I wrote it in two days. I let some people write it. I mean, read it, and they were like, "What do you want to do with it?" I was like, well, "I don't know. I just wrote it." They were like, "No, we should shoot this." I was like, "Okay." So I did some rewrites and tightened it up, and then I called some actors that I knew, and my friend was a director, and we shot it in three days and put it in film festivals. It ended up being one of the five finalists at ABFF and won some awesome. awards. And then it ran on HBO and I was like, oh, I guess yeah. I'm a writer. So yeah, so to see it go from notebook pages, right. watching it on the screen and watching it on HBO, you're like, I, I did that. Wow, that's that's, that's crazy. crazy. That's crazy. Cause it was just like, oh, okay, I guess I'm a writer now, you know? But it was it was gratifying because you you have the power to hire your people. Um, so that was an amazing thing to be able to just call up some friends and call up some, some, some good people that I knew and give them a job instead of me just like, oh, let me do my little one role here. And, you know, yeah. you know, um, but yeah, it's always great for me to be able to give a voice to, um, African filmmakers over there and see their voice come to light and, and help them out as much as I can. Um, so that's for me, that's more gratifying to help the people, give them more, yeah. you know what I mean? Okay. I'm, I'm be all right. I, you know, I'll, I'll find me a role here and there, but it's always lovely to, to help someone else's dream get to the yeah. finish line and have I a part it. in that. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's up. Right before I let you go, thank you. First of all, thank you so much for joining the show. But I play a little game. It's called You Can Get With This or You Can Get With That. And what that is, it's a way for myself and the listeners to get to know the guests better. It's real easy. Trust me. I'll ask you a few questions and you choose the one that best fits you. No answer is wrong. Passion or money? Passion. Yeah, absolutely. Would you prefer living in 1969 or 2069? 2069, I know what 1969 was. Yeah. Just kind of want to see what's going on over there in 2069. That'll be, yeah, something. Being overestimated or being underestimated? Uh, I, like <laughs> I love being underestimated. I know, it's so dope. Like, yes. okay, watch. <laughs> Be the one that everyone calls in an emergency or the one that everyone goes to for a laugh. <laughs> I would rather be the one that they go to for a laugh, man. You know, yeah. I, yeah, let's have a good time. Yeah, I love it. Um, both of these brothers are from Chicago. Uh, like I said, no answer is wrong because they may be your friends. Kanye or Common? Damn. Let's go, with, let's go with Common, man. Let's go with Common, man. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, also Chicago, Harold's Chicken or Gus World's Famous uh, Fried Chicken? See, I never had Gus's, so I gotta go with okay, Harold's. Okay, absolutely. Gotta go to Harold's. That's right. My favorite. Um, who are your favorite two out of these actors? And again, nothing's, you know, wrong. Um, they're both in The Wire. Uh, rest in peace, Michael Kenneth Williams or Idris Elba? Stringer Bell. Yo. Are you out? Come on, man. That ain't even a fair question. Wow. That's why it's so fun. I love it. Yeah, both of them brothers are dope. Amazing. <laughs> but I have to say, I was tuning in the wire for Idris. Because yeah. he was, he just attacked it a different way. No, I can't take anything away from Michael K because Michael K was a oh, he was, yeah, he was but it just it just it just has you know they, they, we could be great actors be phenomenal but then there's that it yeah and if something you lean in you're like who's that dude and when I saw Idris I was like who's that dude who's that dude you know so yeah I'd have to say Idris you're, not by me BMF Lamar that plays the guy that plays Lamar on BMF he has that it factor too the way he has tackled that 
that character, and when he sung You Can't Stop the Rain, when he was that dude, that was like, oh my gosh. He, he yeah. said that I agree. Um, the Wire or Snowball, or Snowfall? This is the last season for Snowfall. I hate it. I was a Wire fan, you know. Um, my TV loyalty as of late has been pretty bad. So <laughs> I know you've been busy. I mean, it is just you know it it takes a yeah. I've been busy. Let me just say that. But I, I was a Wire fan. Okay. You know, Snowfall is dope. I love oh, it. Yeah. That brother dancing it. Idris is a monster. He's incredible. I love him. He is. He's yeah. a bad boy. And then we got Gail on there who's on our show who plays Roulette. Oh, see. Baby, Wanda, she's she's well, you know, we know her as Wanda on Snowfall. <laughs> oh, my gosh. She is really, really good. I, I love her. Some I good, agree. We got some real good hits on there. Yeah. New Edition or Jodeci? Ha! 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 Ah, uh, uh, man, you know you grew up with New Edition. Absolutely. That, that damn KC's voice. Woof. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, yeah, that boy there sang from his ankles. <laughs> um, let me say, I, 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 you know what? I'm going to have to go with, and I know my people going, I'm going to have to go with Joe to see, because that was like, you know, you making love. To, I was making love to Jodeci songs, man. Shire's a man band, a vibe of a man band. Oh my god! <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. New you edition. Know, I was a kid. I was a kid. Right. <laughs> right. And, the, and the, when I got older, with the new edition, it was like, ah, ah y'all kind of. So yeah, I have to say Jodeci, man. Jodeci was like a, a soundtrack of my yeah early yeah. <laughs> love <Yeah>. making. <laughs> <laughs> I saw them um, watch every time New Edition is in concert. I usually go, but they were on tour with Jodeci last year. Amazing, yeah. Jodeci is back. They yeah. uh, performed first. They did like forty-five minutes and was flawless. They're back, so yeah. and I really enjoyed it. So a good choice. Yeah. Last but not least, <laughs> Miss Mississippi or Mercedes. In what capacity? <laughs> as, as a dancer, as a not, not a cutie pie. Well, you can do that too. But as a dancer, oh well, Miss. I mean, Mercedes. Man, Mercedes gonna go. Mercedes is. She gonna get gritty with it. And Miss Mississippi is like, I'm gonna be cute with it. So I have to. I have to go. With, I, I have Miss Miss Miss. I mean, Mercedes. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> and I forgot. Y'all came. P Valley came to Jackson State homecoming last year. How was that for you? Was that your first time coming back? Jackson State. That was my Hello. first time coming back in Are you a long time. Oh, it was after, okay, after you had left, okay. Yeah, I think I, 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 I came back shortly after I left, probably twice. Okay. I hadn't been back in so long, and, and let me, we were at, a, they had us at, at this beautiful hotel by, out not too far from the airport. Mm -hmm. So they picked us up. We were on this like this bus, and we had a police escort all the way to the stadium. And you know, big ups to Jackson, Mississippi, Jackson State University, and the the Highway Patrol cast because they. I mean, it felt like we were the Jackson Five or the Beatles because wow. they closed off all the ramps. Couldn't get on, couldn't get off. Wow. Both sides of the highway was clear all the way to the stadium. It was like, yo, this is surreal right here. How did like, that make you feel? You were at Jackson State and now they are. I was at Jackson State, State, like, yeah, like, you know, a little knucklehead kid running around. I'm wow. like, this, this, is, this is a full circle moment. But also, I'm sure these people are mad because they're like, who the hell is, who's here, the president or something? It just felt, it was surreal and it was like, we don't know how big, we didn't know how big we were in Mississippi. She said, huge. We had no idea how, you know, cause after the first season we were still in lockdown. 
So we still mask up, not really going out. Even when we're shooting second season, we, you know, we still have restrictions. So you're not just out and about. You don't really know the impact. That was like, whoa, this is crazy. And then we walked into the stadium and Coach Prime and just, you know, out there on the, on the, you know, it was, it was amazing, man. It was amazing the love we received. Yeah. Um, thank you, Mississippi. You know, hopefully we're doing, you know, Mississippi proud. You, know, you are. Um, you, y'all are doing a very good job. Thank y'all so much. Um, very appreciative. I was so excited that you all were there. And, you know, I, you know, and I was like, well, I knew, you, you know, you've been there. And I'm like, he's seeing this again. You know, it's just when you were there, that's how W.C. Gordon, he was one of the winningest coaches in the nation at that time. So it was the same type of hype and crowd, but differently because of the gener- because of the culture we're in now, so to speak. Yeah. And it was Coach yeah. Prime. It was it was amazing. I- I'm so glad you got to experience it and um in the cast. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Well. For real now, we can go now. Thank you so much, Rock. Thank you for joining the show. Can you tell the listeners how they can follow you on social media? Oh, man. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> I, you know, if they look up my name, they'll find me. They'll Morocco find me. Okay. Is it Morocco Amari or Rock Amari? It's, it's Rock Amari on Facebook, but on Instagram, it's uh, mo.roc.co. But if they okay. put in my Amari, they'll look. It'll come up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. It'll come up. <laughs> <laughs> you can follow me on um, Facebook at She Says She Says Sports, on Instagram, She Says She Says Sports 23, Twitter at She Says She Says 23, and please subscribe to our YouTube page. Well, that's my show for today. Until next time, this is Sonya with She Says She Says Sports. Say, 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 say,